Our scripture for today is coming from Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech, and I am of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or the deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what you shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. And my thought for today is again, be of good courage. Be of good courage. In our previous lesson, we find that Moses is chosen to be a leader. He's chosen by God to be a deliverer for the children of Israel, to deliver them from the bondage that they were experiencing in Egypt. He was not seeking a position, but God chose to speak to Moses from a burning bush on Mount Horeb. He placed a calling upon Moses' life. And so Moses feels inadequate. And he begins to ask questions. If you are chosen to be a leader, that means you have to have people who are willing to follow you. And the leader has a great responsibility to those that follow. The leader has to have a heart of a shepherd. And what better teacher than God to teach you how to have the heart of a shepherd? A shepherd can have a hundred sheep, but if he has 99 in his view, and one has gone astray, the shepherd is not content until he has brought the lost lamb back into the fold. And you know, I think Moses could relate to being the lost lamb, for he was the Hebrew child that was, as a baby, placed in a basket and pushed down the river 
to spare his life from being taken. And it was while he was floating in the water that Pharaoh's daughter found him. And when she saw baby Moses, she loved him. And she raised Moses to be an Egyptian in the palace. And Moses spent the majority of his life there. And then one day as he's grown up and he's older, he sees an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave and he becomes angry and he kills the Egyptian. So now Moses, who, who was raised up in the palace by Pharaoh's daughter, he is now a murderer and can no longer dwell in the palace. No longer can he dwell in Egypt. <clears throat> but from a bush, God says to Moses, you are to be the deliverer. He spoke to Moses on Mount Horeb. So Moses needs to have courage. He has to have courage to face the man that he was. He has to have courage to face the man that he has become. And it was like he was saying, God, you take me back to a place where I was once praised, but now I feel ashamed. And you know, it takes courage because He, he came to a difficult place where he had to face his past. And it can be difficult to heal from past hurts and past disappointments. However, healing is necessary to free us from the bondage of the past. Perhaps just as God heard the cry of the children of Israel and Egypt who were in bondage, just perhaps God may have heard the cry of Moses' heart as he struggled to find himself when he had fallen from the privileges of being a ruler in the palace in Egypt to now being a shepherd of the flock that he was tending on Mount Horeb. And Moses <clears throat> may not realize it, but God is using this unlikely situation to deliver him from the hurt and disappointment of his past so he can receive his healing and freedom from the bondage of the past. Many feel that being a leader is about position. It's about being in control. It's about calling the shots. Those attributes reflect pride. And the scripture lets us know that pride goes before a fall. However, I would like to submit to you that a leader has to be humble. A leader has to have a servant's heart that will glean from the wisdom and counsel of God to accomplish God's will and purpose in his or her life. A leader has to have a heart that will submit to the almighty God and in due time, God will exalt him. And as a leader, you will find that some people that follow you will be supportive. Some people who follow you will be critical. 
There are some people who will follow you that will be in competition. And if the truth be told, it can really be lonely being a leader because of the expectations that those who follow place on the leader. Hence, it's important that a leader be able to be focused solely on God to be able to accomplish the things that God has called him or her to do. Anything else can be a distraction. A leader must be able to follow as a servant the call of God in his or her life. And it takes courage. It takes courage. So Moses is posed with, you chose me to be leader. How do I do this? And God says to Moses, what is in your hand? And Moses says, it's a rod. And God says, cast it down. And Moses cast the rod down. And the rod became a serpent. It turned into a snake. And Moses was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, God. <laughs> Moses was frightened and he kind of ran. And then God says, now grab the snake by the tail. And he did, and it became a rod again. My Lord, I thought, could I personally do this? I don't like snakes. <laughs> and I think if I threw that rod down, and it turned into a snake, I, I would have been out of there. And then God would speak to me and say, now you got to grab it by the tail. Be still my heart. If I would have the boldness and the courage to overcome the fear of grabbing the tail of the snake. Oh my. But you know, God wouldn't tell you to do it if it was going to harm or hurt you. So you have to be able to develop the ability to see that if God tells you to do something like reaching out and grabbing the tail of a snake, that he is going to take care of you as you do it and that he has a plan and he has a purpose for your life. So Moses sees that by obeying God and throwing down a rod that it can turn into a snake and he can grab the snake's tail and it can become a rod again. And it's a miracle. It's a miracle that will be used to convince the people that God has sent him. For him to do that, it took courage. Then God tells Moses, take your hand and put it in your bosom. And when he did, and he put it in his bosom and he took his hand out, it was completely white as if he had leprosy. And then God said, put it back in your bosom and take it out. And when he did, his hand was normal color. This was the second miracle that Moses would use to convince the people that God had sent him to be the leader to deliver them. And then God told Moses, if you take water from the river and you pour it on the land, the water will be as if it is blood. 
And these are the signs which will cause the children of Israel to believe and have a desire to follow you. So be of a good courage. Be of a good courage because I, the Lord, am your God and I am with you. And that's what God is saying to us today. He is with us. And I just want to encourage someone today that you are not alone. Yes, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. But in every situation that comes up in your life, you have to trust God. You have to face life courageously. And it takes faith. It takes faith that's greater than believing in yourself. It takes faith in believing in the almighty God who has called you for such a time as this. So what is God speaking to you in your life? What situations are you facing? If we're going to make it through life successfully, if we're going to make it through life victoriously, we have to have courage. We have to live a life of faith and our faith has to be unwavering. And we are living in uncertain times where we are called to hold up the light in the midst of a dark world. And as I record, I'm reflecting on yesterday's tragedy where someone went into an elementary school in Texas and killed 19 children and two adults. And it makes my heart ache because it almost makes you afraid to send your children to school. And you wonder why. And I know why, it's because we're living in the last days. But my mind thinks that man, we lost over a million people in the United States alone to this virus called COVID. And you are, and I are alive today. And it seems like people would have a greater appreciation for life. That people would try to live in a more loving and uh, in a graceful way. But it seems like people came out of this, this situation even more angry. Um, lots of mental disturbances have arisen. And truly, to be able to live from day to day and not live in fear we have to trust God. And despite what we're seeing, my sister and my brothers, we have to be of a good courage. And you say, how, Lenore, can we be of a good courage? There are, especially the mothers and the fathers who have lost their children. Some have lost sisters and brothers. Some have lost husbands and wives. How can we be of a good courage? 
Well, I want to submit to you that Jesus is our only hope. If we, our hope is in what we see in the world alone, oh, our hope is of no avail. But it is on Christ, the solid rock, we have to stand and realize that all other ground is sinking sand. And so those things that we don't understand, we just have to take it to God, tell him exactly how our, we feel, and let God take care of it. And so for those who have suffered great loss on yesterday, we express our condolences, our hearts go out, and uh, we will, as the YouTube family, will keep everyone in our prayers. But we are responsible, even now to be of a good courage. So we have to take courage and, and, and know that God is in control, even though the world seems like it and lost its mind and it's out of control. You have to know that God is still on the throne and he is in control. And we have to trust and be Lord over our lives. And this is what he was doing when he was talking to Moses. He was calling Moses to a level of trust. That despite how you feel and despite what you see, despite the limitations you feel like you have, I am God. I made your mouth. I'll speak for you. And God will be exactly what you allow him to be. And the question that is posed be before us is, will we listen to God? Will we trust him? And will we obey? Will we have the courage to do what God is calling us to do in our lives? And so we pray that God gives us the boldness and the strength to be of a good courage. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you and we bow before your throne. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that uh, allows us to come boldly before your throne that we might find mercy and grace in our time of need. Father, we are nothing without you. And you have placed life before us with many uncertain days. And we pray that you give us the courage to face each day. Give us the courage to trust you each day of our life. Lord, give us ears to hear and give us a heart to receive everything that you're saying to us. Help us to live life courageously, trusting you. Father, we confess that we are not perfect. We haven't done everything right. And we ask you to forgive us uh, of our sins and Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, um, help us to reflect you. Lord, we want to be able to hear your voice. We want to obey your call, no matter how big, no matter how small. Help us to live our lives to give you glory, Father. Father, there are so many people in need today. There are so many that are experiencing great sorrow. Shootings in our schools, 
killing our children, killing our family members. There is great sorrow, God, and we pray that you would provide, provide comfort to all. We pray you would cover these families with your love and you would hold them during this difficult time. Father, I thank you for my YouTube family. We are sharing the word together. We are uniting together in prayer. Lord, you're working in our lives and we just wanna say thank you. Father, bless people all around the world. Supply all needs. Bless people to come to know you, Jesus. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen.